From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders around the globe. These are Cloud Native Insights. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, the host of Cloud Native Insights, where we're talking to companies and practitioners about how they take advantage of the innovation and agility of the cloud. Happy to welcome to the program. My first time guest, Ito Safruti. He is the co-founder and CTO of Perimeter X. Uh, going to talk to him in a dual role, both as a, as a practitioner and their adoption of cloud native technologies, serverless specifically, as well as they are a, a cloud native supplier uh, in, in, the, in the security realm. Uh, Ito, thanks so much for joining us. Nice to have you on the program. Yeah, good to be here, thanks. All right, so Ito, uh, if you could, you're, you're co-founder of, of Perimeter X. Uh, give us just, if you would, a little bit of your background uh, and uh, you know, what Perimeter X does and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go into it from there. Sure, uh, so as CTO, I'm in charge of the research, engineering, and product team at Perimeter X. Uh, we are a vendor, a cloud-native vendor of uh, web application security. Uh, protecting all kind of different business logic abuses for our customers, mostly large websites uh, that are uh, in demand of web scale. So not only doing the protection or the application, but also integrated into multiple infrastructure and running at scale. Uh, we're solving problems like account takeover, carding, uh, mage card data skimming, uh, and so on. Yeah, one of the conversations we've been having the last couple of years from security is, you know, that there's no shortage of new threats. Uh, the surface no. area of attack keeps getting more. Uh, here in 2020, everybody's working from home more. Uh, the, the people that are doing attacks didn't stop yeah. working. Um, so if, if you could just, under, you know, how long has Perimeter X been around? Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I want to lead up to the discussion of, of, of serverless. You know, what, what was the sure. architecture considerations before and what started leading you uh, towards, towards making a change architecturally? Yeah, so Perimeter X was founded uh, almost six years ago, a little less than six years ago. Uh, and we were a cloud native solution to begin with. Uh, we identified the challenges of, of where the gap of security uh, in in native cloud application is, where in many cases security solutions are, we're not leveraging the breadth and the, the new architecture of how web applications are built, uh, and we're more of trying to slap in a standard enterprise security and on, on, on other cloud infrastructure. Uh, when we started, we, we wanted to integrate and adopt the cloud and adopt the, the flexibility of the, specifically of the edge, to, to help uh, enhance our customer's infrastructure by adding security onto that versus forcing them to re-architect it uh, when they integrate security into it. Well, it, it, it's interesting. You say six years ago, I can't remember hearing the term cloud native that long ago. Obviously cloud has been around yeah. for a while, but uh, it, it, when I started this, I, uh, one of the discussions around cloud native was, oh, People were talking about adopting containers and Kubernetes, and I said they're, they're great tools um, to, to mm -hmm. help from you know uh, the infrastructure standpoint. But you're talking about right living in the cloud, taking advantage of cloud services. You know that's where we really see the opportunity in cloud native. So um, yeah, you know when when you say you you were built for the cloud, but you know things like containers, serverless, uh, probably weren't doing those six years ago. Um, maybe mm -hmm. you know are, 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 yeah. or, or were you actually? Yeah, so we started uh, early versions of, uh, obviously all Dockerized. Kubernetes was not that great back then, so we were orchestrating some things on our own and gradually adopting other orchestration and, and, and mesh for, for our own service. Uh, that is obviously running on, on multiple cloud vendors. Uh, but from us, from our point of view, um, the key for cloud was how can we enable our customers and how can we integrate better with them in a way that enhance their infrastructure versus add friction. Because the challenge usually with security is that security in most cases or traditionally was adding friction and delays and complexity to developer process. And we're designing our solution to begin with on how can we leverage these new technologies? How can we leverage the fact that CDNs and edges are becoming smarter and can, you can start deploying your own payloads and, and logic to make our logic integrated with them and to partner with these cloud players 
in order to enable our customers to add these additional tiers. And I think this is, from my point of view, one of the key capabilities of having the capabilities of computed edge and serverless is making a lightweight integration and making your existing infrastructure smarter by making it easy to incorporate third-party vendors or other solutions or more logic uh, without forcing a whole re-architecture of the solution. Yeah, no, no, you bring up some great points. I, I remember back the early days of, of, of Docker, uh, it was, can mm -hmm. we get the atomic unit to be closer uh, to what the application is? But, you know, Ito, my, right. my, my background is in infrastructure and it was, mm -hmm. okay, it went from the server to, to the VM, uh, to the container. Yeah, there's an application yeah. that sits on top of it, but I don't think about it, as opposed to serverless starts with the developer first um, and, Correct. you know, how I build my application and, then there's there, there's certain things that I have to worry about the platform. So help us understand uh, do, doing containers, uh, looking at serverless. Was it okay? We're gonna we're gonna completely overhaul and, and throw out what mm -hmm. we had because there's something you know new and better. Um, are you doing still mm -hmm. some containers and some serverless? Uh, help us yeah. understand you know what what drove that transition and right. uh, what the outcomes yeah. were. Yeah. So our infrastructure, uh, our machine learning algorithms, the data processing, the the heavy lifting. Uh, that we're running on our own infrastructure, which is again, cloud native infrastructure, but but something that we're managing. In many cases, is using containers, is using other uh, environments because we, we're running heavy payloads. We're not fully relying on some other platform to run it for us. We're leveraging uh, a lot of these technologies to, to run it in a mesh, to run it in a more efficient way. Where we're adopting serverless is both in, in some of the uh, front end uh, decisions, so uh, making smarter load balancing decision, integrating with some other cloud vendors to help uh, make sure that uh, requests are coming in the right queue and, and, and things like this. But where it is more important even is how can we make ourselves relevant for our customers to adopt serverless and how can we help introduce security into these environments? Because if you're looking at traditional security, if you're, if you're, uh, so so it's more about if, if if I go with that on how can I enable our customers adopt serverless? How can I enable our customers uh, adopt new technologies uh, in the cloud? Uh, because it could be a limitation if your if your security policy or if your architecture is such that requires everything to go through a specific uh, security proxy or some firewall, it may force you. Uh, to utilize very limited uh, architectures. If you want to deploy now a payload on some on, on Lambda or on on your CDN, it typically will be way in front of your traditional enterprise security solutions. How can you make that application smarter? How can you make that application uh, sort uh, uh, self-sufficient by connecting uh, modules, by making sure that you're including modules that integrate the security? And, and bring the security with you everywhere. So, so this is the, the motion that we're trying to, to pioneer. Well, and, and I'm sure you've got a really interesting viewpoint that I'd love to hear on this, Ito. So if you look at you know, most new technologies, uh, especially in the cloud space, uh, serverless specifically, uh, you know, cost it should be less expensive, uh, you know, yep. flexible, uh, I, I should be able to yep. you know, ma make changes, uh, and mm -hmm. speed, I should be able to do more faster. Um, but always when you look at those, you say, well, but what about security? Can I do all of those things, you know, be faster, better, cheaper, uh, more agile, and, mm -hmm. and not be less secure? So I, I'd love to right. hear, you know, any thoughts you have on kind of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the typical things, but, but also your security angle on. Yeah. So one of the benefit of, of using serverless or, and, and, and I think there are two types thinking of serverless. One is running your code in some, some backend application that may access different things, but you don't need to manage for scale because there is some platform that manages that, which is one great option. Uh, what, what you're seeing more and more, and we're, we're working in collaboration with Fastly, and we're, you can see that on other uh, edge platforms, is having this notion of serverless, how can you deploy code to the edge? Uh, the benefit there is that you can mitigate a lot of the risks uh, outside your data center, outside your cloud. Uh, if there is, an, and this is where security plays so well with that, because 
you want to uh, mitigate the risks and the attack uh, as far away from your application as possible. So if you can deploy the logic that is doing that or making decisions at the edge, uh, it helps you improve your infrastructure cost. It, it helps you improve some of the applications that are still in backend. So you can gradually forward deploy some the logic that is relevant uh, at the edge, uh, getting the scalability, getting this ability to to scale bit without limit because uh, the CDN or this edge vendor basically has a lot of capacity uh, and withhold if it's a denial of service attack or if it's any other type of attack where this logic can, can handle. Or even sometimes it just scale. Maybe you you had a very good marketing campaign and you're, you're having a lot of traffic. If you can deploy this code somewhere that can handle that in a distributed efficient way, uh, you're handling it better. Well, and it, it sounds like that that fits into what, what Perimeter X does. You know, when I think about yeah. edge, you know, scale concerns, security concerns are, you know, some of those top of mind as are just, you know, how, you know, can automation, things like machine learning or AI help me? Because usually that, that scale or distributed nature of it means that it's not necessarily something that people alone could take care of themselves. Any, uh, is, 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 am I getting a, right a little bit where Perimeter X is, is helping their customers? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the idea is to connect, to help, uh, to help offline, offset some of the logic or some of the capabilities that that you don't want your business to be an expert in. So if you're a retailer, if you want to be able to sell the best, to optimize recommendation for your customers uh, and to handle that, you don't want to be an expert in detecting bots or in identifying malicious code or, or, or things of that sort. And if you can offset that and with a lightweight, easy integration that does not limit your ability to innovate and adopt new technologies, this is what we're trying to help. Let us focus uh, this but by, by integrating the edge, by integrating uh, with partners like Fastly and, and so uh, we can help uh, enhance the infrastructure and add more capabilities where you can focus on, on doing your own business uh, and we can help allow and enable additional technologies. Um, uh, along your serverless journey, uh, what, mm -hmm. what, what partners, what other, what other vendors were helpful along the way? Uh, as I've looked at it, it it's, it's mm -hmm. a relatively young ecosystem, but it, it's robust. So, right. um, you know, curious, you know, who've been yeah. some of the companies that have helped along the way? Yeah, uh, I think Fastly is definitely one that is uh, from their earlier infrastructure. They always had a component of exposing their edge and making it more programmable uh, via configuration and setting logic and now rolling out a computed edge uh, that is giving even more flexibility. Uh, other CDNs are, are, are opening their edge as well with uh, all kind of, uh, again, Lambda uh, from AWS and, and other services. So this is one, one component. How do you manage that? How do you orchestrate that? There are issues of how much state can you manage their access to data? Uh, and there are different services that allows that. Uh, other platforms which are uh, more of the platform as a service uh, uh, that are not traditionally server considered serverless, uh, you can think of it as uh, e-commerce platforms. Uh, helps you deploy your logic and some, sometimes code or application into into their ecosystem and helps you focus on again managing your your application so think of magento think of uh, a self commerce cloud this kind of commerce applications that you can uh, deploy your logic uh, they're all fit into that ecosystem of help you you want to write your code that you're you're key on and let someone else manage the scale let someone else manage some of the things that are common to all well, yeah, that, that's definitely wanting to see that the diversity of solutions at edge, uh, you know, very yeah. different from uh, if you were thinking kind of the traditional enterprise uh, data center. Uh, any, uh, you know, as a CTO, when you look at edge, uh, you know, where are we with the maturation of this whole solution? Are, are there areas specifically that you expect in the next, you know, 6, 12, 18 months uh, that we'll, yeah. we, we will see uh, so something solidify, mature, 
uh, down the line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that the state where the edge compute is at now is more about deploying logic that is um, remote from the data center. So there is a limit uh, if you look across different vendors to the more IO or data access capabilities of this load. So if you can write the code and, and make it self-sufficient, it's easier and it's more common to find platforms that will allow that. What you're starting to see is how you add the data layer into that tier and making it more accessible. And that opens the, the gate for many more uh, rich and interesting application. Because once you can have a key value store, once you can manage a state, uh, modify configuration, you can then start deploying more complex applications and make more decisions. Uh, do I see a, a billing system running entirely on the edge? Probably not. I mean, you want there are things where you want to store it in the database. There are things that make sense to have it in some backend infrastructure. But a lot of payloads, uh, I, more and more environments are going there. And I think these additional services of of queuing services, data services, uh, database like services. So can, can I run a transaction on the edge? These kind of uh, technologies are cu currently emerging, and you can see them in different levels with different vendors. And they will definitely open the gate even further uh, for more and more applications to be adopted at the edge. All right. Well, you know, last question I have for you. Uh, you know, what, what advice would you give for your peers out there? Uh, as, as I said, you, you know, you were early in, in Docker adoption. Yeah. You, you, you've done serverless adoption. You know, Edge is something that uh, is gaining a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what advice would you give to, to people here in 2020 as, as they look at you know the variety of cloud native options out there? I think the easy one is anything new that you build look around and figure out what is the best technology that can help you get there faster and how can you build and an, in a more strategic way uh, for 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 c-suite executive if it's the cto cio CISO, think on how can you enable your team to move faster how can you enable your team uh, by the solutions and technologies that you select uh, to 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 have the flexibility of of moving faster how can you enable them to to adopt new technologies uh, and make it available. How can, and, and this is, you need some practices because you need to make sure that you're getting the right metrics. So whenever that you're using vendors that will help you collect and monitor the services and get insights, because suddenly if anyone can deploy anything anywhere, then there is some, some concern of loss, loss of control. So, finding the right vendors that can help you or, or adopting the right processes that help you gain this visibility while still enabling them to go anywhere. This is key, at least for us it was key. And this is uh, from wearing my product hat when we're building our, our services, this is what we're trying to enable our customers uh, to do with the security part. Well, Ido Safridi, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Really appreciate you having on the program. Sure, thanks. And if you have people we should talk to, I would love hearing the stories of cloud native, uh, how those adoptions are going, sharing your information with your peers. I'm Stu Miniman and look forward to hearing more of your cloud native insights.